Hi, Breathing with Beerman. We're exciting Facebook Live. We're here with Reed Gersiora. Uh, was my assemblyman for a long time, until 2010. Love the guy's been on the show before. Our famous debate we had. We won't yeah. go to that. But <laughs> And now, um, you, uh, with redistricting, you became, um, you lost Princeton, but you've always been representing Trenton, and now you're running for mayor of Trenton. That's correct. Our capital city, still a major city in its own right with a lot of, uh, should I say, uh, optimistic things that can be done with that city, but with a lot of entrenched problems. So again, touch on briefly though, what, have, what has been your key accomplishments as an assemblyman? Uh, earliest is uh, eliminating uh, smoking from uh, bars and restaurants, uh, worked on the needle exchange program, uh, marriage equality, um, uh, uh, streamlining developmentally disabled services. And now this has even gotten younger people's attention, marijuana. No, yes. No, but you, you've taken I over. was the sponsor of the medical marijuana yeah, program. You've been, you've been way out in front of that. And to me, it's long overdue. I mean, com it's common sense legislation and also medical marijuana, you know, and everything. So, um, and what I do like about you, and it sounds like I'm kissing his proverbial butt, but I do like him. I mean, he was my assemblyman. I voted for him. <laughs> um, is that you actually know the issues. You're a wonk in your own right, but you can explain them in layman's terms, which I've always appreciated. It's my influence from Princeton. Okay. So, um, <laughs> but uh, I really enjoyed living in the community. I've always represented the capital city, and I think I could bring that knowledge uh, to um, help move Trenton forward. We're, we're probably at the bottom of the economic scale right now. 70% of our third graders uh, read at a, a, a below proficiency levels. Uh, we have um, public safety challenges. Um, we forgot as a municipality to apply for transportation trust funding. I that, yeah. And How'd you miss that deadline? It was, yeah, yeah. And it's just inexcusable, but I think that I could do uh, a lot of good in, in uh, bringing some best and the brightest people into City Hall and helping uh, revitalize the capital city and really... Uh, uh, bring some economic uh, opportunities to um, particularly uh, the next generation that's that's coming up through uh, Trenton schools. But when you want to reform, and I got to be honest with you, I've dealt a little bit with Trenton and some of its entrenched bureaucracy, as you mentioned before, they don't even um, answer the phone in a civil manner. Um, I mean, what do you do when you have entrenched groups of people with pushback? How do you slowly from day one start dealing with that? I think we have to change the uh, culture in the city to a culture of opportunity. Um, I think that even City Hall gets it, that, that we could be so much more as a capital city. We need to be a partnership with the uh, state of New Jersey. 50% of our properties are tax exempt. As Barbara Sigman used to say, they're either owned by the government or God. The churches, <laughs> the hospitals, right, right. Uh, the government buildings do not pay any property taxes. And we really need to work in partnership with the state of New Jersey to get compensated for that, um, uh, the property tax uh, um, deficit. We also need to improve the appearance of Trenton. We have to plug the potholes. We have to clean up the neighborhoods. One fifth of our housing stock is either abandoned or in foreclosure. So Trenton has a lot of challenges, but I even think that there's an eagerness with the right leadership um, that we could really turn the city around and, um, and make it hip at, so that more people are attracted to coming into the city. Uh, millennials, they can't afford Philadelphia or New York. Or they're, Princeton. Or, or Princeton. Yeah. And they're looking for that mid-sized city like Chattanooga to, um, to move into. But I think that we need to have uh, some kind of uh, uh, value uh, job base uh, that would attract the younger generation and, and make it a vibrant city again. But what is that tipping point for some cities that have gone through revitalization and a renaissance? Is it when you get start getting millennials coming in and they start serving like uh, faux de grace at, at the local corner store? How do you know when things are getting better? What's the tipping point? I think it's all of the above. I mean, we have a vibrant arts and music scene. You have but, a stadium, um, right, right. And um, we have art all night. We have the punk rock flea markets. And so there's a lot of things for the younger generation to come come in. Uh, there's a wonderful project that they just turned one of the Roebling buildings into um, uh, apartment lofts. And um, a lot of uh, new newcomers to the Murphy administration are settling there. Oh, they are staying in Trenton. Uh, they have 70% seven, occupancy right wow. now. So there are people moving into um, uh, Trenton. Uh, but I think that we need, with the right leadership, we could bring uh, more uh, industry and jobs and, and start working on uh, lifting everyone in the city up 
and uh, having a better quality of life. Your opponent, though, um, if we should mention this, Mr. Perez, he says that maybe you should get out of the way. He's, I, this is what I've just read, mm -hmm. that you maybe don't even belong here. He's trying to, like a carpetbagger, even though you know, you've lived in Trenton for what now? Um, since 2011. 11. I actually moved in uh, uh, Trenton before he did. Oh, right. Um, oh. So well, he's, he's the, from Trenton, he, though, but yeah. He but, grew up in Trenton, but left a right. long time ago and um, uh, spent uh, most of his time down in Virginia. Um, so he's the Johnny come lately, um, but he wants to bully his way into the uh, city. You hall. actually see him as a bully. Well, he's um, trying to degrade your name and 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 innuendo. You're saying yes, yes. He uh, um, yes, and he also um, uh, won't debate. He's too uh, afraid to debate, but yet he wants to be this uh, um, uh, this Donald Trump bully that's going to take over mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the capital city. He is a Republican, so. Uh, he brings those Republican values and the, that bulliness uh, that I don't think is uh, welcome in the uh, capital city. He also wants to have military-style policing, and I don't think that that's uh, necessarily going to be a positive thing for, yeah. especially the community relationships uh, right. and proving right. upon them with the police. That's a big thing. With any city, though, you said potholes, cleanliness, and safety. How would you improve that with day one with the police? There is a problem in Trenton and perception, some are very true, about gangs, about crime. To me, it's very neighborhood-like, though. Mm -hmm. Some neighborhoods I've been even at night, things are fine. Two blocks yeah. away, you could hear shooting. How would you go about that community policing? Is that yeah. the key? Well, Right now we have 290 police. Um, in our heyday, we had as many as 400. Right. Or so cut, right. Um, Tony Mack, uh, before he went to jail, uh, laid off 100 officers. We can't afford not to have that uh, uh, police rolls brought back to 100%. And then you could have community policing. We have uh, cops who get out of their cars, walk a block, and then by then they have to get back into their car mm -hmm. and uh, and go off to another uh, hot spot. So if we can... Um, uh, work better with the state to get compensated for the um, tax exempt properties. We could bring our police roles back up. We can have community policing. And we really need to instill confidence on uh, people coming in and investing in the city. Yeah, from there, um, yeah. And uh, uh, I think it all feeds in, in itself. Christie's plan to replace the state, three state buildings outside the uh, was that punishment of Trenton? I never understood that. I mean, did Chris, um, yeah. I think it was more about the bond council work that he mm -hmm. uh, was able to get a fast deal done in the eleventh hour. Gotcha. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so but those buildings, uh, and, and Trenton really didn't step up to the plate to try to work with the governor mm -hmm. uh, to to have it where you had a win win situation. We need those buildings downtown, either in the transit center or in the downtown uh, economic development area, and to make it work. If we had this is a once in a generation infusion of $250 million. If we can have that money spent downtown, that could be the impetus for further economic right. development. And then it feeds on itself in an upward spiral instead of a downward spiral. Absolutely. So who do you come in with? Do you have your own lieutenants? How, how are you going to make this happen? If you win on the 12th, that's when the vote, June 12th we're talking about? Yes. So you would have two weeks off, you said, and then what happens? Well, I think it's, it's important to do it right, not to just simply... Um, have window dressing, uh, make symbolic gestures. And, or, or clean house uh, within two weeks. And oh, then right. put, yeah. um, what I'd like to bring is attract the best and the brightest, have some uh, committees that will work on the, the various public safety, economic development, education issues, and uh, try to work on, on uh, streamlining the inspection process, uh, bringing parking that. meters in. Uh, we, have, uh, we have parking meter posts, but no parking meters in large parts of the city. And um, uh, if in Princeton, you get out of your car and you see a, a attendant drive right by oh, you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so we need to do things like that to bring in more revenue into the capital city. Right, right. And I think I'm in the most, most qualified to do that, uh, uh, to work with uh, uh, the various community groups and to uh, help attract uh, uh, economic development to downtown mm -hmm. and really make that city work. Because you've had all this it's assembly, man. I mean, Perez, um, I mean, his experience has been more... What, what he ran a couple of years ago? He was in the army and security, and um, he claims he's an executive. Um, uh, we already have an executive with no elected experience in the White House, I'm and sorry. I think that okay. that's how he wants. To, he's a Republican um, that probably wants that same style um, in City Hall, and I don't think it works for Trenton. Um, I think that we need to uh, bring all uh, ethnic backgrounds, all races, backgrounds, genders, sexual orientation. 
uh, but to help make that uh, city work. Mm -hmm. What about, I keep on reading, I read the Trentonian every day, the ELC problem, problems, everyone seems, in, I don't know if you've had, everyone, when they report about funding, you know, funding that leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. People owe money, maybe they got money wrong. What, what's going on with green? I mean, I mean, can you comment on that, Perez and the other candidate? Um, well, uh, Perez just uh, uh, didn't file reports uh, four years ago, the last time he ran for uh, mayor, and I think he's got to file some more to, to update his records, but um, that's something that he has to straighten out with uh, he didn't the didn't file a report, but that's, that's egregious incompetence. You're supposed to There's do those a, things. They're, they're investigating him right now, so um, I, I don't know what the outcome is. This is the problem with, with Trenton. I'm sorry, because it upsets me. I mean, I had Tom Pre um, Paul Perez on before. I mean, I, seem, I liked it, but the more I read it, just it seems like the same old, same old. Mm -hmm. Tony Mack, I knew he had issues from way yeah. back. I'm, and this is a problem with democracy and yeah. apathy. I mean, this is what has to be changed. Well, I'm afraid of, of the uh, resume uh, inflation that he does. He claims to uh, have a Harvard degree when he just went to a, uh, a seminar up there. Right. Um, right. And things like that. Um, uh, he inflates his executive experience that you can't Google and find. Um, uh, I think he's the wrong person for the job. Um, I think that we need somebody with a lot of elected experience or that mm -hmm. knows about government and knows how to reach out to the state and the county and really make the capital city work. Mm -hmm. well, how, how, how's your work with all the different constituencies and, and the voting public? How is that? Because is, it, is, it, is things getting more colorblind? Do, they get, do people seem to want someone they think can do the job? On it? I think people want competency this time around. Right. Uh, we had two, we, well, Tony Mack is, is now serving the rest of his sentence in jail. Um, I got to give credit to Eric Jackson for um, at least stabilizing the um, uh, city um, replacing department heads that were under uh, Mac that were just not efficient. Um, but I think we have to do so much more. Um, uh, we have to instill confidence. We have to uh, make sure that we apply for transportation trust funding. So well, that, that, yeah, they didn't even get those out in time or sign proper documents in time. The smallest uh, town in my uh, district, Pennington, got $900,000. The capital city got zero. Right. Um, so... We have we actually uh, the Senator Turner and uh, uh, Assemblywoman Verlin of Jackson. We went with the uh, Commissioner of uh, Transportation, and we asked her if we could apply after the fact. Mm -hmm. um, they can always find money in government. Uh, right now, we we're applying after the fact, uh, but hopefully, uh, Trenton will get some uh, some kind of uh, value for the twenty three cents per gallon that all our residents pay. Uh, we have so many potholes and so much infrastructure yeah. improvements that we need. Um, we have 60 vacancies in the water department. Yeah, the, um, we're, yeah the, that was his half-brother there. There was major mismanaging the water department and letting the water, which I think it deadens your brain. That's a major health problem. You know, that might of, be the problem with the city hall. Is yeah, I, I, were, I, I really, were, no, I'm not joking. They were drinking from the fountain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this cognitive decline there. There was lead. It was too high. It, yeah. the, the arsenic level was too high and everything. Now, in all fairness, um, in order, after Tony Mack, in order for us to get uh, capital city aid, um, the Christie administration asked Trenton to enter a memorandum of understanding where they would approve all hires. Oh, I, I um, do understand. At the gross, e e egregious incompetence, yes. But with that, the Christie administration refused to approve any hiring at the water department. So they are largely responsible for the decline of the water quality. But I think what Trenton should be looking to, and right now we, we have a, a, a private contract with a out-of-state management company. We should be looking to um, persons like uh, uh, Singh Fouché uh, to come in uh, from West, West Windsor, Windsor, who just retired, yeah, yeah. who is a uh, DEP water quality, ma quality manager. Mm -hmm. And here you could bring regional experts to come right. in, help us uh, right the ship, and um, yeah, call, instill some confidence that we're going to have water quality again. Uh, coming from uh, Trenton Waterworks. That's why I like it because you could harvest the intelligentsia. They're right there for the picking. A lot of people, who, like a Feng Shui, who's retired, uh, I don't know him personally, but he seems like the kind of guy who'd like the challenge. He'd like to do yes. something like that. And, 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 and I experts. spoke to him about it. Yeah, right, absolutely. Right. And that's one good thing that as being the uh, uh, legislator from the Capital District, I think I could bring the expertise that are in the region, that are working right. with the uh, other mayors. Um, and working with uh, people from Princeton, we have uh, five universities within uh, 10 miles of the capital city. Yeah. And we need to start tapping into those resources to help um, 
uh, uh, get Trenton moving in the right direction. You're ready-made experts who can volunteer their time and expertise. Again, harvest the intelligentsia to get things moving. And then find people in the community who maybe, because I've talked to some people in the community and they go, why should I get involved? It's not going to yeah. go anywhere. I, don't, I can't yeah. trust the people I work with. Yes. There's incompetence and everything. I'm actually kind of excited, but can you win? You came in second. How are you <laughs> going to get that vote out? I mean, we have, again, you can uh, hype your website and everything. The vote's June 12th. Your website is what? Uh, read for mayor, so yeah. number four mayor dot com. Yeah, um, how's it going to go? Are you going to be picking people up, uh, driving them to the polls? What happens? We're going to be doing all the the above. Uh, the, when you run an assembly campaign, you do it globally. Uh, when you run a mayoral campaign, you have, it's a block by block street fight. Mm -hmm. That said, there were seven candidates, and um, uh, uh, Bethea Green yourself. Yeah. And Paul Perez, unfortunately for me, has been offering jobs so that uh, he's trying to pick up support. But uh, most of the other candidates are going to be aligned with me in the, uh, the runoff. Mm -hmm. So um, I think I have the best uh, way to um, uh, transcend uh, ethnic and race groups and gender groups um, and bring a lot more coalition uh, together for the, the runoff election. But again, it is a street fight, and I could see him offering jobs. And I mean, I, and I've talked to people before this interview, I talked to people in Trenton. Some people said, I'm voting for Paul Perez. He's Latino. I mean, yeah. it, there are is some of that. People don't, low voter um, information, should I say, low voter knowledge and everything. You, that's stuff you have to overcome. Walker Worthy, they said, was a, you know, a candidate of the machine, for lack of a better word, yeah. and he didn't do that well and so and stuff. So. Yeah, um, I've uh, made up with the machine, so to speak. Um, Brian, you um, and uh, uh, but uh, people from uh, Walker Worthy's camp are interested in helping out my uh, oh, that could help my get campaign. Out so he was number three. So number three and number two right. equals number one plus. <laughs> well, I'm excited, you know, because I I could just see I could just see um, you know this could become a nice story and this could get a lot of publicity and this could be like you know another city comes back. Yeah, because so, you know Trenton's been run, like you said, the, the apathy, the incompetence. Yeah. It's depressing because look where it's situated too. It's it's yeah. a prime location. Yeah, I'm actually uh, having a fundraiser in Princeton at the end of the month. Oh, and, end of the month. Um, okay, where is it going to be? Um, it's going to be over uh, Jenny Crummler's house. It's going to be a backyard Love. barbecue. So look out for that. Uh, but I would love for my friends from uh, Princeton to help out on the campaign, and I think we could do this together. We've uh, had a really traditional commonality between the capital city and Princeton. Um, uh, uh, the Princetonians uh, here before have never hesitated to reach out and, right, and try right. to help us on education issues, on uh, environmental Fund. issues. Right. 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 Uh, right. So I look forward as a, the mayor of Trenton to still reach back to my friends from Princeton right, right. and help us out and get our city moving. Yeah, and again, it's our capital city. A lot of people do work there, lobby there, vote there, whatever. I like to, nice to see a trolley car. I remember in the old days, you used to have transportation. You get back and forth and everything. Get a nice movie theater. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited that? as well. And I, I would encourage uh, friends to to check out the uh, uh, the old Chambersburg. We have many Latino uh, restaurants yeah. that are fabulous. Oh, and, yeah. There's a good Guatemalan and, one I go to all the time with the New York Times. Think, uh, the yeah. Guatemalan restaurant that used to be the old uh, um, La Gondola. La Gond yeah, you can still see the murals from Venice, but yet have good homemade uh, Guatemala, Guatemala food. food. Uh, the old Titonis on Chestnut is a Venezuelan oh, yeah. restaurant. Right, right. Um, it's like the new generations come in. Yes, it, absolutely. It, it, it has that iron bound feeling like in Newark. It's, in some ways, it's exciting. It's revitalized people eating. The food's delicious and everything. And I think the, the mayor needs to be the cheerleader for the city. Um, uh, to also reach out and uh, instill some confidence for people to come in and invest and spend right. some time and shop and spend money. On that note, um, what about uh, Murphy? I know Murphy has a lot of stuff on his plate. We have a budget that's kind of, uh, we, you know, there's some deficits in our budget, but do you have a relationship with him? Is he interested in seeing the capital city be like a phoenix? Absolutely. Um, the Governor Christie completely ignored the city for, for eight but years. Benign, benign neglect almost. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And especially that building project uh, and which yeah. uh, Paul Perez is, is, in, uh, is in favor of not changing. So he would, he does not mind uh, Governor Christie is Republican pal. Um, he doesn't mind that plan, but that will have no economic effect on the, the downtown. Yeah, it seems like it was just a love you know to himself before he left to say something like, I did this, you know, this grand. Yeah, and the president is more interested in the endorsements. Uh, he wants right. the laborers that want the jobs now, which I understand, uh, but yet we could have more economic development, more jobs right. if we can make that downtown work. Maybe get. I remember a while back they wanted to maybe have like a, make it Wilmington, North Carolina, North, and have movie. You know, have a movie sets and everything. I mean, I could see Absolutely. that happening. 
an awkward be there. And if you, again, give us your website and when the Jenny Cornmill's party is going to be since we're on Facebook Live. I believe it's June 1st, uh, but it's also um, uh, the web page is um, read at, for uh, mayor. Uh, R E D number four mayor dot com. I only have five on me, but I'll give more later. Here. Oh, all right. Yeah, I don't know if that's a bribe, but uh, no. <laughs> that has to be reportable. We'll have to get your. It will be. No, we'll have to get your occupation. This was done for dramatic effect, but you give <laughs> to his campaign, yeah. help him out. Let's make Trenton the capital city of of New Jersey and a capital city we can be proud of. And Reed Garcia, I hope you're elected on June um uh, June twelfth. June twelfth. June twelfth. Great. Thanks so much, Adam. Yep. All right. Great. And we'll be right back. Hi, back again. That was an exciting interview with Reed Garciar, running for mayor of Trenton, New Jersey. Can he revitalize our capital city? I don't know. We go from Trenton to horror films. I'm not thinking any kind of... <laughs> like not, a one hell of a jump, no, right? No, no. Trenton's good things. I, I, I work outside Trenton. No, so I mean, I don't want to be... Yes. <laughs> but some people would say horror film Trenton. No, you, you hear bad stories and everything. And then we have Lauren Lepre. Lauren, uh, I like, you know, I, I, right. I, I have a big narcissistic problem, but I have to give credit where credit due. We won three awards, I think. Wow. Princeton you TV. Think three. Three. He thinks three. It could, could be two, myself. it could be four. Um, <laughs> Princeton TV had these awards for most Facebook watched, most uh, Vimeo archived watch shows. And thanks to people like Saitavo Sally, who does a great job of editing and also getting people their segments. And of course, Lauren Dupree, I would like to take all the credit, but I can't. But Lauren Lepree is a guy who gets these guests who have actual followings, right. who then watch Facebook Live, and then I'll, I'll also keep on watching their segments. So we won all these awards. So I have to thank you for that, Lauren. You got it. And I'll have Scythe come in here and give you a nice deep massage of you with a happy yeah, ending. Possibly. We can hold up on that. Okay, but so I got, we can have an award ceremony too later that. And now you've brought another interesting part. So, look, I can be irreverent. I don't care. I, I didn't say like I, I could have said uh, Scythe come in here and, and give him anal, but stop I didn't it. say that. Stop! Stop! No, no, I just said, I can't send this to now. my mom. I just <laughs> think, I digress really quickly. Yes. So I'll, I'll shut up. I'll introduce it. Yes. I, I, I don't know. Yeah. So this is a, a friend, a good friend of mine, a good fan, a uh, good friend of the horror community. This is Brian. He runs the Horror Syndicate. They review movies. They have this great podcast. And we're welcome to the show, my friend. I'm glad to have you on. So, tell us how what was the birth of the Horror Syndicate? How, how did it all come together? Well, first off, gentlemen, thanks for uh, having me on the show. It's really great. I love these plants. They really brighten the room. They do. Um, you got to water them. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta water them. Uh, uh, second off, if we get um, locked in here. We can eat it. There we go. Or eat each other because this is a horror <laughs> yeah, exactly. situation, right? Yep. This a could little... be. I could see this being walled off. This becomes our hell. But anyway, go on. Go <laughs> a little on. inbred uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, hills of eyes here. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. So, so we got started. Um, well, before that, I was doing a radio show, and we had guests on like Heather Langkamp uh, from the Nightmare on Elm Street series, and uh, you know Doug Bradley, who was Pinhead, and then. Uh, that sort of fell apart, and then I went to another uh, website, and uh, you know, he, let's say, long story short, the guy threatened to kill me and my family. So then what? I was in a bit of a hiatus. <laughs> then, uh, we, could, we could we could do that story another time. Um, no, but we got time. One second. I mean, there's <laughs> whack jobs here, person TV, but I've never been threatened on my family. <laughs> oh, it was... I, th I remember I threatened to beat him up once, and did it until he told me he knew about UFC or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it was well, it was very exciting. I never feared uh, my life more than I have ever. Uh, wow. So okay. uh, you know, so, so moving that kind of yeah. Out. So that that just kind of faded out and uh so <laughs> faded out so uh, i didn't went, kill him by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i'm not dead yet so yeah. but uh i went through this really uh uh <laughs> dark depression and then um i was uh i started like uh collecting more movies because that's what i was originally I, I collected a lot of horror movies and out of print movies a lot of from anchor bay um which is you know run by stars which really doesn't make a lot of uh you know they don't really produce a lot of movies everything is now scream factory um, but I met these guys um, who were doing a panel on a Facebook group for horror movies, and uh, Ray Merrick, was, uh, who was the president of the horror syndicate, was doing a, uh, a um, panel like movie versus movie versus movie, and uh, he got kicked out of the group because they're like, this is not our criteria, you know, this is supposed to be about selling and trading movies, so he uh, requested if anyone would like to join his team. So I saw, and I'm like, you know, and I used to write before, I used to do like a radio show, what the hell? And, uh, I Were you joined... working a day job that you had a family and kid and you're depressed? So yeah, I, I was. I was. I was a bartender working. Uh -huh. uh, working uh, in South Philly. 
A depressed um, bartender in South Philly. Well, that's how we. That was writing from his life. That was writing from his life. And uh, and you know, uh, yeah, being married and everything, uh, I wanted to really focus on you know uh, my career as a bartender, and well, that didn't work out very well. So uh, I joined uh, Ray Merrick, and he had another guy, um, Jared Letourneau, who is uh, you know now we're all really close, but we never met in real life, but mm -hmm. we're we're still uh, good friends. It's kind of like catfish, except, you know, we were not trying to have sex with each other. And, so, and, and none of you guys actually have met in human form. Yeah, no, team. we haven't met in human yeah, form. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I, they, I, they brought me along and uh, and we started doing like... Because uh, they yeah. live all over the United States, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Ray's from Illinois uh -huh. and um, uh, Jared's from Kansas. And then uh, you know, so, so we started uh, talking about horror movies and like reaching out to people, inviting our friends. And we started off with like maybe like 500 like in the group. And then now we're at 8,000 going on 9,000. Wow. It's wow. only been two yeah. years. And you're yeah. selling ads and everything? Are we making money? We, we attempted the ad <laughs> thing. Uh, the ad thing was disastrous. And we're like, you know what? We really There'll be a time thing. for that. You'll, yeah. You'll, you'll, yeah. You'll, you'll get back to that. Yeah. yeah. Like, if we want to be like, you know, Dread Central, we're like, oh, huh, let's start a Patreon. But, you know, we didn't do that. We didn't go that route. So uh, everything was word of mouth. Everything was like, our motto was, we're fans for the fans by the fans. And, uh, and we started to do uh, live Facebook shows. You know, we were like, why not? Let's and have you, a Facebook and show. And you kicked Talking it off right, didn't you? And we you? kicked it off right. Lauren here was our first celebrity guest. <laughs> there you go. I saw, uh, Lauren's planting these seeds <laughs> in success every place. I saw Lauren. Scythe can still come in here and give you a response. <laughs> right, go on, go on. I saw Lauren through, uh, through the, uh, um, you know, social media. I saw him on Facebook. Uh, I saw this movie called The Dark Military. Yes. Uh, being talked about. And the now famous Dark Military. Now, yep. now famous Dark Military, right. planning two more movies. I, I understand. Yep. Um, <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> so uh, I, I hit up, um, you know, who was working as a part-time uh, DP, Steve Carino, and uh, who we met through mutual friends. And, He's uh, a producer, director, too. Producer, himself, director. Yeah. And um, I said, how can I review this movie? And he hooked me up with Lauren, and Lauren was like, hey, I'm from Deptford. I'm like, Shit, I'm like five minutes from you. Uh -huh. And so here I found out that not only is he trying to get his movie out, but he lives five minutes from me. And I was like, I have to know this guy. So I hit him up, asked him about his movie. And, uh, you know, he was just like, you know, more than welcome. He was just like, here, take this link. This is my movie. Take these photos. Take this. He's mm -hmm. like, he's like, let me know when the review. Yeah, is like done. Lauren's always ready to go. He has every all yeah. the other. Yeah. yeah, fast response. Yeah, fast response. You have to be. Yeah, Mar and, and market, 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 <laughs> market, market. Yeah, yeah right. But um, but you know, so I I interview I I watched the movie and I was like, this movie is great. I'm like, I'm having so much fun with this movie, and it's great because I'm such a huge indie horror guy that when I see movies such as you know, uh, with with high production values such as The Dark Military on you know like a shoestring budget. You know, yeah. you got to give credit to where it's doing. Oh Lauren, yeah, you, you know, Lauren, to get these people to give, the, give their expertise, and they need serious actors. The guy who just, you know, straight out of Compton was on. Yeah, yeah, Shug yeah. Knight Mark character. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You had him. Yes. You, you had it. You had a, a whole list of like, uh, of, in a, in a, like local indie actors who were making a name. Man, for themselves. Yeah, Alex right. Vincent, you know, yeah. Sharon so, Lynch too. Yeah. So we decided to get Lauren on our show. Lauren and Steve Carino joined us on our show, and uh, you know, we just all became best friends. You know, talking about horror movies, and then we talked about. 80s canon movies like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Revenge Ninja movies and Charles Bronson. And, Revenge of oh, the Ninja. Yeah, yeah Revenge yeah. of the <laughs> Are you doing Death Wish 1, 2, 3, something like that? Death Wish 3 is my favorite movie out of it's all. The first though. one I saw. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It got more and more kind of not ludicrous, but w wild. In yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think mean, they went up to five, right? With Charlie, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Death Wish 3 was like that one It's hard movie. to kill an old man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Death Wish 3 was that one movie where, like, the first one was like, ah, oh, this is sad. Was, it, but it was a phenomenon, too, at the time, because a lot of cities were going through, like, uh, it was like, you know, uh, Fort Apache, the Bronx, mm -hmm. and it had this concept, you have to start defending yourself. So yeah. it had that social message there. Yeah. But then I, De Death, Wish, Death Wish 3, Vincent Gardenia, the cops, like, he's, like, joining Charles Bronson at the end, and kill them all or something. That was yeah. that was uh, or two. No, that was two. You're right. Um, yeah. that was two. That one was um actually composed by uh Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin, and then he went on to oh, uh, really? take my music for the third movie. Okay. And Michael Winner, who was directing it, was like Kinda this this stuff. huge big cigar smoker, <laughs> and he had personal cigar PAs that would like give him a cigar whenever he ran out, and like I think like 25 of them got fired, really, so, oh, wow. because they weren't quick enough. Shows you what kind of movie they were making. But Death Wish 3 was like uh, breaking two electric boogaloo meets <laughs> Death Wish. I mean, yeah, yeah. Crazy what, movie. What, uh, to the viewers, what, what is the current horror movies, you would say, the indie ones that people should be keeping an eye out for? Uh, right now, uh, we should definitely check out, there's three movies in mind. 
um, uh, besides the dark, dark military, military, of course, nice. of course, the dark military. There's three e movies. Even Adams in the dark military. <laughs> That's right. You are. <laughs> I, I give the sex appeal. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I was. It's the only reason I could sell the movies. I was extremely, I was extremely turned on. I had the hugest boner watching <laughs> at, uh, at NJ Horror College. Like uh, the, the premiere of, uh, of the Dark Military was charisma. was so much fun. It was because uh, everyone's like, <laughs> and then like your comedy scenes where like they make a joke. I'm laughing, uh, and then like I see you look around the room, and you're like, Brian's laughing. I'm gonna laugh, and it's just like, yes, <laughs> someone's laughing. Like someone gets it, uh, <laughs> and it's like other people are just like. What what was that, I find that sexist? I find that sexist. <laughs> I believe that you say. Anyway, so I'm sorry, I interrupted you. So what, what, what do you want? Um, so we so we have the barn, which is directed by Justin Seaman from Pittsburgh. Uh, it's been hard working guy, hard working um, guy. Too. I, I gave you the movie to borrow because I know that you're extremely excited to watch. I, I've been it. waiting to see this. Yes. <laughs> um, there is a, a Terrifier, which just came out. Uh, we actually had the uh, the guy who played Art the Clown. It's about this killer clown right in the you know. We're having clowns live on Facebook. We have Pennywise the Clown making a comeback. So here's Art the Clown. And that's a sequel. Yes. So uh, to Terrifier all... is a sequel to a segment from a movie called All Hollows Eat. Yes. Which, yeah. And uh, I, that's something everyone should be checking out. It's, it's, it, it, the reviews are ridiculous for it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then, there, of course, uh, uh, he's now joined us uh, at THS List. We have uh, director Mike Lombardo, who's directed a movie called I'm Dreaming of a White Doomsday. And it's what about, a title! <laughs> you should, you should see the movie, uh, and it's about um, it's about the apocalypse, right. and it's about this mother raising a child, and they're pretty much the only survivors. Uh, you know, Mike does a great job not telling you what kind of apocalypse it was. All you know is there's creatures out there, and it looks like some type of nuclear war happened. Right, right. Um, you know, not to give much away, but you know, Santa Claus makes an appearance. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I expect oh. Santa to show up at uh, Apocalypse. Is what I, I, I like want. the sacred um, icons, like a Bing Crosby song getting obscured to a different type of like to a horror genre, so to speak, and Santa Claus. I can imagine what Santa Claus might be doing in this. Ah, uh, he's impersonating Bing Crosby. Oh, I mean, no, I can't yeah. give too much away. No, anyway. <laughs> How do you, uh, because I'm one of those people, it's one of the reasons I came up with the dark military to introduce new horror icons to the world, but I mean, we know why they do it, but put your thoughts on uh, the Hollywood just when it comes to horror, hitting that reset button repeatedly, which is something I hate. I don't support remade movies. <laughs> I don't ever, I don't ever, you know. Are you being sarcastic I now? Know, or, or I'm my being... Asperger is kicking in, I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> You're just the ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, I'll, I, take I'll take it. I've had this love-hate relationship with modern horror movies, and it all started when um, The Fog became a remake. Um, I it hard the hard genre really didn't kick into my life until I was uh you know closer to being an adult because I loved all movies from and then horror was something I really fell in love with. Mm -hmm. Um, but the fog ruined it. I was just like, they need to stop making these movies and stop making them PG thirteen, and they're doing it still to this day, <laughs> right. and they they haven't learned their lesson yet. But we're getting a lot of great um big budget horror movies that are coming out. Um, even some that are PG-13. I know Jason Bloom from Bloom House is making... Why don't you like PG-13? Because more people can watch it. Is it, watch it. it for, for someone like us, we like the, the gore, the horror oh, growing you want up. The art. Yeah. Right, right, right. And you're, you're taming it down. You're basically selling it out. You're trying to right, right. water it down so parents could still take their kids. Right, yeah. right, right. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, that's commerce has to meet I mean, art, the, so the, the, the dark military is not a blood fest. It's got its moments, but uh, I mean... Right. No, well, I saw it, it too. Yeah, but it's yeah. not gratuitous. You have a purpose for doing it. You just yeah, yeah, to yeah. Throw yeah. As much I, I, I looked at. I looked at was was when Dark Military needed to come out. I, that's why there, I added action to it. I had the the police mm -hmm. drama to it. But you still got some horror movie icons. Because right, right. what what is left to do? Hey, don't go down that back road. Hey, there's a cabin. There's a bad guy that lives on it. And they go anyway. Right. Oh, this house is haunted. They buy it anyway. <laughs> How many times, like, 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 I, I just sometimes cringe when someone sends me their link, and I'm like, I don't need to see this. Yeah, you, you showed me everything in 90 yeah. seconds. You know, <laughs> and total guys remember they're when they're 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 in the kitchen floor and they get swept. You know, normal people are like, we're out of here. <laughs> it's a great home, but we're, we're gone. But they, they thought it was yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. And we will get out. I was buy it anyway. Common sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the, the, like Lauren was saying, like the PG thirteen, like like the studio wants you to bring your kid to see the movie, but you know. Why is it any different than when it, when a Nightmare on Elm Street movie comes out? The kids are still going to see it. It's R-rated, yeah. and it's fun. 
You know, the I did. I got. I, I still saw. It. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I I still went and saw R-rated movies, and it, it's just something that you do. If it's something that piques your interest, parents are going to take their kids anyway. What I don't like is when parents drop their kids off in the theater, and you have all these kids just chatting up through Annabelle. Even though Annabelle was, in my opinion, a garbage movie, and it wasn't until Annabelle Creations came out where I'm just like, let's give this a try. Is the second one good? Because yeah, that first one, I was just oh, like, man. and? I was just like, that first one, I was like, and? Well, yeah, I did watch the first one a little bit on HBO and nothing happened. I turned it off yeah. after 40 minutes, actually. Yeah, it, it was, it, it, you know, we, um, my wife and I, we went and saw it three times, and Two of the three times we actually had to leave because of the room being crowded with kids. And they weren't uh, even paying attention? They weren't even paying it's attention. And, even though yeah, it was yeah. R-rated, but still parents are dropping their off. Yeah, yeah. PG-13, parents are still going to drop their kids off and do the same exact thing. That's why everything's going to VOD, where it's like you can watch a horror movie in the comfort of your home, an R-rated horror movie, and you can watch the unrated cut. You, you can have the surround sound and the perfect, yeah, and everything else. Yeah, like but, you know, for, for people like myself and, and you guys, oh, like... Movie, I want the movie experience. Yeah. yeah, you want the movie experience. Yeah. So we need to stop releasing these PG-13 horror movies where we're watering down creative thinking, we're watering down art. It, you know, art, you hire a director, you hire a writer to make a movie and because you believe in their project. And then all of a sudden, the guy of the money comes in, you know what, let's cut this out, let's do this, because, you know, we want to aim it towards this. Someone who probably has no idea yeah. how to make a and, movie. And they're, they're also trying to keep things safe, like, oh, that's that's, you know social justice people yeah. are going to get pissed off over that. I mean, the fact of the matter is, I, I took a big chance with Dark Military that I made a horror movie about terrorists. <laughs> okay? From the dark web in today's world. That was That's a surprise. I haven't had well, really big targets on my back yet for it, but yeah, it may but, come. But I like that, though, because it was topical. It was topical. Yes. It was just, you know, it had everything you said, and, the, the detective, and the horror. Maybe thing. you want to go on a dark web. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Adam will show you how to get there. Yes. <laughs> Keep getting kicked it's, off. It's, it's in your rain. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but anyway. Yeah, but oh, the whole oh, the whole oh. world going on with horror movies, only do you think, like, the... the the conventions mm -hmm. that exploded. I think that's uh, the biggest strength right now to reach the audience. Absolutely. And you're, re and you're reaching them too. And it, it, what's amazing the thing is I watch a little bit of your clip. I, I actually did watch it. Oh, and, thank and you. You guys can shoot the breeze and I want to listen to it. That's a gift. Mm -hmm. and just people talking and I want to listen to it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, like, like Laura was saying, the convention market, um, you know, a social media, like our biggest threat right now is like, you know, the White Walkers in Game of Thrones. It's net neutrality. It's like we're waiting for that time for the internet yeah, to just yeah. shut us down. It's free, free thinking. It's it's it, you know anyone can go on and promote their business yep. on the internet. And if that's taken away, we get theaters with PG thirteen horror movies. Right, right. And, and there's not a damn thing we can do about it. So we're we're constantly fighting to, yeah, right. to and and we're constantly fighting for indie artists to get their work out there because it's so important. It's so imperative that they get their work out of there because this is the this is the future of of horror. This is the future of anything, actually. He's the future of horror, though. Yeah, yes. yeah absolutely. He's the future yes. of horror. Okay. And you know, a twelve year old kid walking in with a camera, shooting his friends, making a movie, wearing mask and fake blood. That's the future of horror. Like you know, the, horror is a genre that is not going to die. It keeps getting stronger and stronger, even though like the. I like over and over. Yeah, <laughs> I, I went with the horror universe because the comic universe is just tooth and nail the competition. Yes. Everyone hates you if you mess up on one storyline. Oh one God, yeah, yeah. yeah. that didn't happen in the yeah. comic. Yeah. I'll castrate you, <laughs> symbiote. Yeah, how dare you, bitch? I didn't realize that, but those, they take it very it's sacred. But we, we just had the Infinity War come out, and there's no Wolverine, no Magneto, yeah. no no Professor Xavier, no Xavier. Batman. But yeah, they, okay. but I'm just saying, you know what I mean? That they, and they got by, and how, what is that? I don't know how much money that thing made. You oh, know? man. And then the whole thing's going to work, work nothing when they all come back. Yeah, <laughs> It's exactly. going to kill the beauty of the whole thing. But exactly. Yeah. We should just end it right there. You yeah. know, Thanos goes to his island yeah. and admires his glove and realizes that he's a terrible father. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is that, Freudian, is that how most people's lives end? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we only have about six So he has to tell his bond up. What, so what are you doing? What projects? You, know, you and Lauren, what, what's happening? Um, the horror. The horror well, thing. right now I'm just promoting Lauren with his dark military stuff. Uh, we dark know, military, now we, uh, you know, Lauren and I have been talking back and forth about getting back into acting and uh, you know trying to make our our name and staple through that industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's great that uh, y y that we have that access to uh, you know talk on social media 
And it's great that ha- that Lauren was like, I'm going to make a movie. And it was All Hallows Eve that you watched that. Inspired. that that's what inspired for mm-hmm. Dark Military. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, it's just that that passion that you can say, I'm going to make this movie. I'm going to get everyone involved, you know, and that's something that will be continuing to do. And that's what the horror syndicate is it's going about. to continue. Yeah, absolutely. So it's an, an, it, homage, an homage. Yeah. To, in a way. Yeah. In the horror syndicate, we we have this thing. Okay. If if you make us pay to watch your movie, we'll give you the review that we think you deserve. Where if we get a movie, um, you know, say if someone says, "Here, take this movie," and this is a movie I made. Let us know what you think. We'll promote the crap out of you. I mean, we're going to promote the crap out of you either way, but we want to make sure that the indie artists are getting heard. Mm-hmm. And we want to make sure that they're that we're the voice that says this movie is great. You need to go out and buy this, and you need to support the arts because you know without it, there's nothing. As a reviewer, what do you feel about the people that spoil? Like, like in their review, they're actually dropping spoilers of the movie. You know, that's what. <laughs> aren't you just like, why? What? <laughs> what are you thinking? You know, you know, it's, it's spoiling a movie is one thing. I think if you spoil a movie in good taste, where it makes people want to go out and see it, like. You know, people are saying, oh, Serbian film. You know, when you see that title, you're like, no, I'm not really, really going to watch. It doesn't pique my interest. And then you're like, Serbian film. Um, this happens. And you're like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and then you have to go out and watch it. And you're like, that's just like. If because it's that a... demographic might not be interested unless they know about that. Yeah, exactly. Right. But, you know, if there's like a movie like, say, uh, you know, say if the, the Avengers, the new Avengers movie was a horror movie and, you know, people spoiled it like they did anyway on yeah. Facebook. It's like, shit, well, now I don't want to see this movie, but I'm going to see it anyway because everyone else is seeing it. Right, but, you know, let's say there's a movie that, that isn't as popular as that and people spoil it. It's just like, well, I really have no reason seeing this at all. Right. And it just ruins everything. But, um, but I feel like, you know, it, you could spoil a movie in a good way without spoiling the movie. Um, but, you know, if there's a spoiler that just it completely ruins the movie, I hate it. I absolutely think it's dreadful. Can I ask a question? We only have, what? Dark Shadows. Did you like that? Dark Shadows, the Tim Burton movie, or the, the, oh, the series, series from the 80s, or the series 60s, from the 60s? 60s. There's <laughs> only, one, only one year, I think, in the 80s. 90s. I'm talking was about it, the original. Was it 90s? Friday nights at uh, 10 o'clock it was. Yeah. yeah. It was, uh, or dark, yeah, night, for one year, 1990 yep. or, so, or something. But what about Dark Shadows of the late 60s? You know, the, the ABC soap opera. You know, my mother was like trying to get me into watching soap operas because her thing was like all, all my children and one life to live. And she was like, well, maybe if it's a soap opera about vampires, he'll watch it. And I, you know, I was a kid when I watched it and I wasn't really into it. But then I they later watched like Mario Baba movies. And I was like, oh my God, it kind of looks the same, except there's more blood and tits. Oh, so, yeah. but I mean, Dark Shadows didn't have enough blood and tits. So I don't gotcha. think I was really interested in it. The networks weren't going to allow the boobs. No, know, not at all. Especially back then. <laughs> Kolchak, The Night Stalker, that was in the 70s or something. Yeah, well, I, I got to watch episodes of that um, on, on uh, back when Sci-Fi Channel was a great channel. Um, I mean, it's still a good channel, but so we're getting a lot of mega shark movies. And Actually, I don't know yeah. why we're doing movies about animals. Well, I, I should shut up because you only have about what two minutes. Oh, stretch, stretch, no, stretch, stretch it. it. Stretch All right, it. we're good, good. Stretch. Okay, we well, 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 we, um, we're gonna stretch it, but let everybody know into that camera ahead of time. You got your show going on tonight, right? We do. We have our show going on tonight at nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time, eight p.m. Central. Uh, tonight we have uh, a, a new thing that we're doing. We're bringing in synthwave artists. Anders Ekstrom, who is known as Damocles, um, hoping to get a little more uh, music into uh, you know the uh, the the website and the podcast. And uh, but most importantly, uh, we want to make sure that we're promoting everyone who is uh, you know an independent artist and make sure that their work gets heard. So please tune in tonight at nine p.m. on our Facebook page, The Horror Syndicate, and you can watch us Facebook Live. And we have open Q and A the entire. Oh, I episode. like that. It, so it's interactive. It, it, yeah, completely interactive. You yep. can go on they there. Type out their questions right there. Yeah, yep. you yep. can you can say a uh, Yanni or Laurel, and we'll tell you <laughs> what we think of that thing. And uh, it's this is a great time, and I hope that you know we give you a great show that you can completely interact with every Friday night, and we'll have more horror guests uh, such as Lauren, and uh, you know talking more about movies such as The Dark Military. So please. The now Hang famous dark, dark military. military. The now famous dark military. I am so excited. Ryan was recently at my house and got to see my outdoor movie theater. 
and, and the bar. I'll, uh, I'll of course, I've that. never been to his house. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he has to keep division. I understand <laughs> that. You know? go yeah, it was it was great. I, outdoor yeah, movie he, theater. Yes, I have an outdoor movie theater, six uh, sixteen foot long, oh ten feet high. Oh my yep. God! You guys are you guys are I mean, a bromance. <laughs> yeah. I was I was really <laughs> well, kind of upset that Lauren didn't give me a quaalude. Um, and, <laughs> and, like, because that's what I was thinking. When I was going there. I was just like, oh, you're so like, retro. I love it. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like two drinks. Nah, he's not gonna get. And I'm like four drinks, five drinks. I'm like, Lauren, here's my beer. Where's the quaalude? <laughs> but uh, you know, it was it was you know, it definitely had a blast being at your place. Yeah. And you're like, you're a huge movie fan. Mm -hmm. and you, you guys movie. are like, you got to meet the dark military. Some of the dark right. military. You guys are brothers of different mothers. So you're in your element there, and you're and watching we're, the family. We're, we're, one, we're one city over, so right, right. Some, some, some town yeah, away. like nine yeah. minutes away. Yeah. So I can't wait. He, he can't wait to see the next movie that's well, screening. I have another question. Though. Absolutely. We talk about horror films and everything. Have you ever, you or you, any encounter, or any or someone else you know had an, an encounter with the supernatural, real life? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Double yeah. <laughs> you, can you share it? I mean, uh, I saw a, a shadow man. Is what you call them. Um, they're like these. Uh, uh, that was George Shadow. Yeah. <laughs> no, one one night I'm just chilling. At, uh, my my wife is very new age. She's very like into like the Wiccan. Um, and uh, I'm I'm just like you know just go just for it. More, depression, I, Wiccanism. Wiccan, I support you. Do, a broke do bartender. You okay. Yeah, broke okay. broke depressed bartender. Uh, okay. Who's no, I like Wiccan. it though. It's very diverse. Okay. And um, multicultural. Okay, and sorry. I think we were watching uh, some type of movie i think it was a disney movie because that if that happens when you're a father you you get your yes, your heart get replaced that. with yes, disney yes, movies yes, yeah. <laughs> endlessly and i look in and for my peripherals i see this shadow figure and i'm really? like i'm like what's that and <laughs> my wife's like what what did you see i'm like it I, was I, that vivid i saw a shadow figure and like i looked it up and i did a little research on it and it's like yeah these these shadow figures exist and it's just like they don't they're not gonna do any harm to you which is great to know but they exist when you're like having like yeah you know, like emotional trauma or stress. I've heard that they, sometimes they 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 get stronger when you have emotional fear or, st or stress or trauma. Or yeah, they turn into the Babadook and they just follow you. Wow. The Papa book. So, so you really you're being straight with me. You saw. No, this. I'm being straight. I'm being absolutely serious. I'm, I've like never you. believed in the supernatural. Like I've always believed. I'm not a very religious person, even though my Twitter handle is the Haraju. Um, I, oh, aren't you? <laughs> I never, um, I never believed in like, you know, anything like supernatural or anything like that. Um, and, uh, but I believe that there's something out there. I, I don't, I don't think it, it's, you know, not going into religion or anything. I don't, I don't believe that it's the G word. I believe that there's something in the universe that mm -hmm. is. Well, we, you, you can't explain it, but you think. Yeah. I but said, um, I just heard. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the shadow figure yeah. under the bathroom, probably. Shadow people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What They're about you, though? What happened? To you? And that's the shadow figure was actually working for the guy that was uh, trying to kill Brian. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so they yeah, had, a big, had a big, strong Italian accent. <laughs> you motherfucker! <laughs> 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 so you're the shot. What about you, though? Uh, you that's gonna take time, and oh, uh, you know, I think I think we're gonna get cut off. So. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, we're, well, I think we need to wrap it up. Wrap it up. So we have the horror, the, the horror Jew. Does that mean do you like do you clock uh, Gentiles with stale, stale bagels? What's the horror Jew? I'm, I'm uh, no, no. It's just say uh, who I am. I was bar mitzvah at thirteen, oh, okay. at the tender age of thirteen, and I love horror uh, movies. That so must have felt great. Yeah. Oh, here oh we go. Oh, look God. at that. What is this? Oh, look at that. Look at that. My God, this look at that. Just the great right amount of girth. Oof. Yes, uh, Princeton <laughs> TV. I uh, have to give George credit, director. Um, he splurged on this, and I have to say, Lauren, if anyone deserves this, um, you deserve it because <laughs> we I went from the ratings uh, machine and Here we Sally go. and everyone else. Because Sally's the one who cuts it, but the Facebook, yes. We're getting cheers from from the audience. We have a little audience behind the plastic. Oh, look at that! Yeah, there's, there's like ten of them. We've got there. the purple rain going there right we here. Go. Yeah, we go. Oh man, <laughs> it looks like it could be. Brian, this is this is a real. It can actually can kill I, someone. Can I, can I hold yeah, it? we could kill someone it's like just, that, and un, like yeah. an unfaithful. Yeah, you could actually smack someone. Yeah, in the head, but it, it could kept. be. It, it could. You could. You could bludgeon someone. It could be a sexual device. It could be one of the. You know. Could I be, I feel like a, I feel like Dario Argento holding this. <laughs> This you is gonna, so many references. This, this is, gonna, so this, smart. This is gonna go in my office. Uh -huh. How do you feel about this? How, what do you What do you feel at this moment? I no. feel it says 2016 <laughs> on it, but uh, but what, we're yeah. not supposed to see that. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but I believe that. <laughs> I've had a little problem with dates. Uh, what can I tell you? Okay, it's all no. good. Well, I, 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 so I feel, I feel see that, that we just topped the world it. right now. And uh, we're, La we're, coming for, we're coming for late night TV. We're coming for Fox. Yeah, there you go. And Lauren goes home and justifiably goes, is Adam just taking all the credit and just laughing at me? And when I, you know, I drive all the way back to Deptford and everything. So I'm trying to prove, you know, you know, you know that we do, you know, you know. Lauren was the one who got guests and, like you. And, you know, and, and so you know, Adam normally doesn't wear an Italian tablecloth. It doesn't, it doesn't happen. You know, I was I was wondering where the uh, you know if there was going to be any ketchup sauce yeah, yeah, yeah. from like or like yeah. tomato sauce straight out of the Sopranos. Like I'm just so. happy I'm not yeah. drilling on it at this point. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Lauren, we should say Lauren made Facebook Live and Princeton TV right. <laughs> the highest numbers ever. You know, people were so jealous too. I, really? I, I, yeah, they, they, they should be. They were like, I put a lot of time in. But they're coming up to me. They're coming up to me. So, like, like I, I felt like some producer in Hollywood. I couldn't believe it. Like small town version. I was like, maybe we should do something now. <laughs> These people wouldn't even talk to me before. Literally, you know, they, you know like you know, foul mouth, aggressive, bizarre, weird. You know, the whole thing. Now they see you on the street. You're like, hey. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That exactly. Yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna need a shadow <laughs> figure to protect you. Uh, thank yeah. you. But yeah. again, it was. I, but I said right. Wasn't me. Give me credit. Lauren wanted to do this show, so I said, "Okay, <laughs> do this." And then I'm going to get more guests. That sounds good to me. Yeah. So we give. We, we have to give. We'd have to give. Well, I'm. I'm glad that you dug at the bottom of the barrel and picked me out. <laughs> no. <laughs> I really. So the first thing we would have to say then we'd have to give Two a minutes. special shout out to Wisdom and Chains. Was, oh God! Look, everyone, go through yeah, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, Chuck David. Trees, uh, da David from Monster Mania. Uh, we would also have to give the New Jersey Horror Con guys. Oh, and they let me on their thing, right? Uh, the the beautiful uh, Dana and little uh, little Darlin from, from the Pinots for Pitbulls. The Pitbulls, the hot, the hot centerfolds and everything. Yes, they did. And also, I've been telling people, look what Lauren does. Yes. Well, if you want to promote your show, you got to do what he does. Yep. You get he, guests like Mr. Enright. Yes. Hey, thank you. Horror Syndicate. But, but also, I forgot you were there, Brian. Actively <laughs> promote their show and yes. use Facebook Live yes. and everything. And I never even asked you to pay for the ten dollars, even though you know, I've been putting it on your bill. I'm just joking. Uh, yeah. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be funny. I'm not even. Well, I got now. this rad trophy, so very rad. This is, this is it just don't look at the date. <laughs> look at that. That happened, folks. <laughs> so, um, are we continuing? I'm looking at Scythe DeVoe here. Keep going. Wrap it up. Wrap it. Wrap it up. Yes, okay. So um. Up. So, so anyway, I want to again. No, really. No, really. Seriously, I'll say this one more time. In the last time I'll say it, but it wasn't for it. Like Lauren Lepre, Sally Tazalar, of course, Scythe, and everyone else. Sally, again, she's the one who takes these segments and gets them out really quickly, so people like you can can promote it. And then Lauren, of course, you know the Facebook Live thing and and the Vimeo thing because it gets people who promote the shows. Before I got grandmothers who wrote books about like you know like pebbles that brush against you know catfish in water and how that's and exciting. I got you eleven views. Eleven that's, views. That's <laughs> exciting. I wish I had pebbles. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean really, you know, esoteric things like that. So anyway, this has been a fantastic, fun to getting breezy with Beerman. Check out the horse and dig it. Reed Garcia from from there. Lauren the priest still, you still want to come back and be part of the show? Uh, right? Absolutely. AverageSuperstarFilms.com. Right. And don't forget, always watch the now famous Dark Military. It's been Breathing with Beerman, and <laughs> we'll be back next month. Boom. Welcome back to What's Trending Red Raya, only here on Breathing with Beerman on Princeton TV. So, second show, second episode of the year. We have cool stuff for you. Today, or for this month, we're going to have women empowerment theme items and topics. So our first one is this one, walk and earn. So most of us, especially women, our New Year's resolution comes with, you know, fitness and all that. So exercising may be hard, and I know you might be giving up already on your New Year's resolution for exercising, but maybe this app can help you. It's called Sweatcoin. So it's so great. So for every 100,000 steps, oh, 1,000 steps that you make or you take outside, you earn 95 cents on the sweat coins. So what happens is like you can redeem the sweat coins to buy apparels, workout gear, exercise classes, or you can even donate them to charities. So this is especially great if you are someone who likes to run outside. For those folks who love to walk or run in the gym, in the treadmill, it won't work for you because it wants you to be outside. So, but what you will do now is just go to iTunes or Google Play and download sweat coins and start walking and get those sweat coins. Next up is, this is one of my favorites for this month. So lingerie for everybody. So 
sometimes it's just fun to be, you know, to wear sexy lingerie. And even though, even though no one sees it, maybe it's underneath your work clothes, it's still empowering to feel sexy underneath. Or some of us may be not wanting to or not into sexy lingerie, but everyone does wear underwears, or some of us. So this company, Ooh La La Cherie, sells gorgeous lingerie, body suits, bras, underwear, and even bridal lingerie in sizes ranging from small to 4X. So they're a very inclusive company. I love their body suits. Be make sure you check them out. And because you are watching What's Trending live on Facebook now, you can use the code TRENDING at checkout and get 15% off on your order. So visit the website and prepare to fall in love with their items. Our third item for this month is this one so i was clicking away i was like searching for things you know what we do now nowadays online so i saw this gorgeous colorful robe and i really wanted it but then as i was reading it i saw that the proceeds for the purchase or for the purchase for the robe will go to a good cause so it helps women in india who are at risk or survivors of human trafficking so the company is called sudara and they have loungewear for men women and kids, as well as cool accessories. So the fabrics are so soft, comfortable, and each purchase invests in job creation and skills training for women in India who are working to remain free from sla sex slavery. So make sure to reach out to me to check out their website. Our next one is closer to home. So the YWC of Princeton have the next gen board. So if you are, or do you know a woman between the ages of 21 to 34, we're looking for an exciting and you're looking for an exciting and engaging leadership opportunity. So the WY, the YWC of Princeton Next Gen Board are looking for new members. Um, this is a self-governing board, so it's a group of women, a younger generation to fight and eliminate racism and also empower women. So participants here are engaged in personal and professional development while serving in the board. So participants will also be mentored by community leaders, mostly women or all women, and from a variety of backgrounds. So I am lucky to be part of the inaugural board and I just started my second term as part of the board and I'm also one of the vice presidents. So your application is due on Monday, April 2nd, 2018. Visit www.princetony ywcaprinceton.com slash nextgen and for more information. So our last one is the Emerge New Jersey. So what is Emerge New Jersey? So Emerge New Jersey is changing the face of New Jersey politics. So they identify, they train, and encourage women to run for office and get elected and seek higher office. So they have an intensive cohort based on six month, month, six month training program and they help number of ele electric, uh, democratic women remains flat and declines. So the need for their work is very important. What they do is they train women to run for office. I was lucky to be part of their 2018 class and they just want everybody, the democratic women to run and get elected and be part of the change and thus changing the face of politics, especially for women. So those are our five so what's trending items and topics for this month? Make sure to check out all those links that I'll be sending or posting in my social media at Raya Arbyal on Twitter, at Raya Mish on Instagram and Snapchat. And that has been our what's trending for this month. Bye bye week to all.